We need to talk Tesla stock. Are we about to see a massive short squeeze that could squeeze the shorts and push Tesla stock well above $300 per share? Well, possibly. Could we also see a slight retracement in Tesla? Possibly. I think there's a lot of things we need to get into and provide some clarity for everyone out there. I will give you guys my opinions on what is coming next for Tesla. Keep in mind, we called the bottom at $100 per share, and we've basically been right ever since. Now, I don't want to come off as I have a crystal ball because I certainly do not, but some things with Tesla are so obvious they're almost stupid. And I don't want you guys to be stupid. So let's go ahead and get into all of this information. If this is your first time to the channel, well, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you like to make money and you want to make more of it. You want to reach financial freedom as quickly as possible or stay up to date with everything happening in our markets as well as with Tesla stock every single day. Tesla stock on Friday formed a bull flag pattern. This is where you rally aggressively, you come down, consolidate, retrace back higher, and then come down and reconsolidate again. This is called a bull flag. You usually get a return of about 18%, 85% of the time. So it's one of the most reliable technical indicators. And where that could put Tesla stock from here is about $322 per share. And I think that's quite reasonable even before earnings. Tesla stock could actually well exceed over $350 per share following earnings because it's as simple as this. Analysts have no idea what's going on with Tesla. They don't understand companies. We understand companies better than they do. That's why we were correct with our estimates for Tesla deliveries and not one single analyst bullish or bearish got the delivery number right for Tesla. They, they, they weren't even close. The only thing the shorts can even say is margins are going to go lower. Now the expectation for Tesla's margins are way too low. The current estimate is for Tesla to give us EPS of 79 cents per share. Now, how you would find out the actual net margin on this, you would essentially take the outstanding amount of shares, which is 3.166 billion. You go ahead and times that by 79 cents. That's going to give you your net profit margin. It's around two and a half billion dollars. And then... You say, hey, what's Tesla's revenue number likely to be? And it's estimated at about $24 billion, give or take $100 million either direction. So then you come out with a profit margin, a net profit margin of about 10.5%. Last quarter, Tesla had a net profit margin of over 13%. And you've actually seen Tesla cutting shifts. You've seen the prices of metals such as lithium actually fall recently. And Tesla is typically a very efficient business. When prices of things fall and they cut hours, it typically leads to better margins. That's why Tesla is so much better with their margins than other automakers. It's simple. As simple as that. Do you think Tesla's margins are going to drop over 20% quarter over quarter? Probably not. We haven't really seen price cuts in Q2. Now get this, the most recent estimate for Tesla's margins from Zach's consensus estimate is 62 cents per share for this quarter. That would be on that same calculation, a net profit margin of 8%. There is no way in hell that is going to happen. So these guys have it wrong. That's the bottom line. And with when Tesla improves their margins and they're delivering record number of vehicles, again, no analyst got it correct, the only direction for Tesla stock will be much higher. Now, what factors will drive it potentially higher than $350 per share? Shorts covering. Short sellers have been covering on short positions in the broader market at the fastest pace in three 
years. You haven't seen shorts cover this fast? You got to go back to June of 2020 when interest rates were at zero, when there was a million reasons to go long in the markets. But guess where they have not been covering on short positions? You guessed it, Tesla stock. Tesla stock currently has short positions of 96 million shares. This is the highest amount of shares currently sold short in Tesla that you have seen in over two whole years. They've done the exact opposite of cover on their short positions. They've increased their short positions in, in Tesla, even as most of them are down massively. Unless you you shorted when Tesla briefly hit $284 per share, you're, you're down on your short position. Most of these shorts took out short positions when Tesla stock was in that neighborhood of about a hundred and thirty to hundred and fifty dollars per share. You can see this by the rise of the amount of shares that were sold short, which really started aggressively in December and January of 2023. Take a look at this. November 30th, 2022, Tesla had a short position of 77.64 million shares sold short. Fast forward to January 31st. Wait, what was going on with Tesla at that point? You jumped to 90 million shares sold short. The end of January of 2023, Tesla's stock was trading at about $125 per share. Short sellers have lost over $15 billion and they refuse to reduce their exposure. This ultimately only ends one way and that is with a massive short squeeze. They've been wrong so far and they will continue to be wrong. Not to mention a possible gamma squeeze that could be equally, if not more aggressive than an actual short squeeze. That is because some hedge funds, institutions, and retail investors, mostly retail investors, as you guys are the smart ones, have been buying options in Tesla. Very bullish options. A matter of fact, on Friday, when Tesla stock fell almost 1% towards the end of the day, take a look. If we blow this up on the bubble chart, for the $280 call expiring next Friday, you seen volume today of almost 88,000 versus the open interest at 11,000. Whenever you see volume that is so much higher than the open interest, that tends to be a very bullish sign. So retail investors and a lot of hedge funds and institutions that are using options to trade Tesla, they did not get bearish on Friday. They actually got substantially more bullish. And I think that tells you something. We also seen strikes such as the $300 call expiring this next Friday see volume of 36500 compared to to 20,000 for the open interest number. People are betting that Tesla could rally aggressively, essentially at any moment. Now, if there is one reason for Tesla's stock to rally, it's this, the price to earnings ratio coming down. The PE ratio has been the main argument from the bears and the shorts to why Tesla stock is overvalued. That is why you have seen Wall Street banks such as Morgan Stanley, Barclays, and many others downgrade Tesla stock recently. It's due to this PE ratio. But better than expected earnings, a higher EPS number instantly changes the valuation calculation for Tesla. For an example, for this year, now you can do this for 12 months out as well, in which we'll do, but for this year, we're currently estimating Tesla to give us EPS of $3.40 per share. So the way you find what the PE ratio is, is you take the price of Tesla stock, I round it up a little bit, $275 per share is what I'm going to use here. You divide that by $3.40 and you get a PE ratio of 80 0.88, almost 81. Seems a little expensive. 
Well, three months ago, we were expecting EPS for this year of $3.94 per share. So what does the same calculation, $275, divided by $3.94 per share look like? Well, that's a P.E. ratio of about 69. Considering Tesla just grew its EPS at 33% last year, if you factor that into Tesla's calculation, then you find the PEG ratio. And that's where you go ahead and divide by the growth rate, essentially. So divide by 33, that gives you a PEG ratio of 2 point one one for the current year the peg ratio on something such as apple for this year is over three it's almost four same thing for microsoft so tesla is actually trading twice as cheap as apple and microsoft especially if their eps beats the estimates now let's talk about next year 20 24. That's what Wall Street really likes to focus on after the first half of any year is over. We start to look at 2024. So Tesla stock's going to trade more on 2024 numbers than 2023 numbers at this point. Let's do the same exact calculations as we just did to find out the current PE ratio for the next 12 months, your forward PE ratio, which is typically what is used by Wall Street. If we go ahead and do that, 275 divided by the current estimate for 2024, which is $4.87 per share, you get a PE ratio of 56, almost 56 and a half. Well, three months ago, the estimate was $5.61 per share. So let's do 275 divided by $5.61. That gives you a PE ratio of 49. Let's say... The three month ago estimate is roughly where we're going to be at for 2024. I think that's a pretty good estimate. I think these estimates we're seeing right now are far too low. So if you go ahead and divide $3.94 divided by $5.61 again, dividing the 2023 Full year estimate that I think is going to be more appropriate, $3.94 per share, and then divide that by the full year 2024 EPS estimate. That gives you an EPS growth rate of 70% year over year. Well, we just calculated the PE ratio. If Tesla comes in at $5.61 of EPS for full year 2024, that means Tesla next year could have a peg ratio of 0 0.7 anything under one is considered extremely undervalued for any growth company out there especially for tesla that would be like a mortgage your house sell your arm kind of opportunity to buy tesla stock now what if we're a little bit more conservative? Because things might not be the best case scenario next year. Who knows what could happen? Let's be a little bit more conservative. Let's go ahead and say that Tesla gives us full year 2024 EPS of $5.20 per share. The current estimate is $4.87 per share. That would be an increase of, what, $0.33 cents, uh, above what my calculation is. So let's go ahead and do this calculation again. Two seventy five. dollars divided by $5.20 per share, that gives you an PE ratio for 2024 of 52.88. Now, let's go ahead and say the EPS growth rate on this is about 50%. Let's just say that's where the number comes out. Instead of 70%, it's 50%, which I think is pretty reasonable. I think that's pretty conservative for Tesla, given everything that we're currently seeing going on with Tesla. And I'm not going to rehash all of that right now. So what we're going to do is divide the PE ratio that is more conservative divided by EPS growth rate, call it 50%. And you're at a 1.05 peg ratio. Again, anything under really one and a half peg ratio is considered cheap. Like anything around one or under one is extremely low. 
Now let's go ahead and say the EPS growth rate is even worse. Somehow Tesla does not grow to the extent that we think they will their, their earnings. So let's go ahead, divide 275, divided by 5.20, because I, I think $5.20 of EPS for 2024 is, is pretty certain from here. I, I don't think there's a lot of argument there. The EPS growth rate can be a little uncertain though. Let's go ahead and say that Tesla only gives us a 30% EPS growth rate. That is worse than we've seen from 2022 to 2023, right? That would be Tesla having a slower growth year next year than what we've seen this year. Okay, so let's go ahead and divide that by 30. You're still, still on a ultra conservative calculation at a 1.76 peg ratio. The, the, Tesla would have to epically miss on earnings epically miss i think for the stock to fall from here the bears the shorts they're not going to bring up the peg ratio they're not going to bring up the actual way to value tesla that's why the bears are downgrading the stock they're trying to throw everything they can at tesla and tesla continues higher you really haven't seen a fall from the highs sure tesla went down to 240 what happened it bounced right back up and it's still trading at the higher end levels, regardless of downgrades, regardless of any negative things analysts have to say. It's because they're analysts. And again, they're not doing these calculations. They don't understand how to value Tesla. And that's where you're fortunate enough to be watching this video. I guess this is a good time to mention that if you guys want to come join the Patreon, come trade with me every time I make a trade if you feel like it. It's never a recommendation. Get access to a lot of cool tools over there. Link down below in the description of this video or in the pinned comment. Let's go ahead and get into some of the potential negatives for Tesla. And if things were to get bad in the markets, where Tesla stock could go before earnings i think after earnings my opinion there's like a 90 95 percent chance we rally aggressively I, sh I should say potentially seeing a short squeeze or gamma squeeze based on an eight to ten percent net profit margin analysts are expecting that, that's not going to happen it's not going to fall that much even if it comes in at 11 percent, even if it falls two percent quarter over quarter you're still going to beat the estimates. There is so much room to miss here. It's stupid. Okay. So let's talk about it. This upcoming week is going to be a big one. You've seen the markets sell off on Friday, especially into the close. There was no news on this. There was no specific reason why this happened. Markets rallied before this sell-off. And this was actually the biggest one-hour candle that you have seen in a very long time. This was the, the biggest kind of momentum drop that you have seen in a while. This is likely because of the significant data that we're going to be getting next week. On Monday, you're not going to get anything significant. On Tuesday, same story, nothing significant. But on Wednesday, you're going to get the inflation data. Inflation rate month over month for the month of June is expected to come in at 0.3%. That would be up from 0.1% at the last reading. So you're expecting some sharp upticks on the headline inflation rate month over month. Inflation rate year over year, you're expecting that to fall sharply to 3.1%. Last month's reading was 4%, so uh, about a 25% decline year over year. Core inflation rate year over year, you're expecting that to fall to 5%. Last month's reading was 5.3%, and the core inflation rate month over month, you're expecting that to fall to 0.3% compared to last month's reading at 0.4%. Now, you're expecting inflation to fall across the board besides your headline inflation rate month over month. Reason why stocks likely sold off is because stocks have rallied a lot, right? It's been a good ride in 2023. On a risk to reward ratio, the, the, the risk is definitely a lot higher right now compared to where it has been in the past. A lot of hedge funds institutions have some big gains out there. 
it makes sense to trim some of those gains heading into next Wednesday. So it's not going to surprise me if Monday and Tuesday of next week are also red. And Tuesday could be quite red the day before CPI comes out. Now, that's not the only big catalyst for this upcoming week. You're also going to get on Thursday, PPI month over month, you're expecting that to increase 0.2%. Last month's rating was negative, negative 0.3%. So you're expecting an increase in PPI, which would not be a positive sign. Friday, you're going to get the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. The biggest thing out of this survey is the five-year inflation expectations. You have seen the five-year inflation expectations increase recently, but last month you actually fell. So you hit this low during the, the low in the markets of October of or really September, September, October of 2022, five-year inflation expectations hit 2.7%. They hit a high as of May at 3.1%. It was a pretty steady uptrend for three months here, and then you fell last month. If this does jump up again, you're going to be in a confirmed, pretty confirmed uptrend here. You don't want to see higher inflation expectations. That's a potential problem. You're also going to get one-year inflation expectations, and those are expected to come in at 3.1%. This has been on a pretty consistent downtrend besides this big spike that we've seen in April. So there's plenty of reasons to want to take a couple bucks of profits and reduce exposure, and that would ultimately be be the reason why the markets could fall within the next couple of days. Now, what could this mean for Tesla stock? Now, as we went over in this video, the valuation for Tesla, if you factor in the EPS growth, and that would be the peg ratio, which is really the only way, again, to value a growth company, you're so cheap right now, I don't expect a lot of downside. Now, if the markets do see some moderate downside, maybe falling 3 to 4%, which is possible. I, I don't think that's the most probable outcome. But if that were to happen, to find Tesla at 250 wouldn't surprise me. But I think 250 is going to be such a strong support level. Again, the valuation is so low for Tesla. I don't see a fall under that. Unless the inflation data were to come in way hotter than expectations, you are re-accelerating across the board, then you could get more downside, but that would mean a sharp, big drop in the markets, which is a fool's game to try to, to try to play that. So I think odds are you probably do rally because inflation's probably not going to rise again. That's not what I'm expecting. You're not seeing data suggesting inflation is rising right now. So that is what you guys really needed to hear in this video. The odds of Tesla falling dramatically from here, very low in my personal opinion, and really looks unlikely. So share this video with someone that is invested in Tesla that really needs to hear what's going on. I, I, see the comments. I respond to a lot of them. I I look at all of them, to be honest. Like every single comment I read. And people are starting to get a little bit more bearish out there, calling for 240, 220, 200, 175. The only way that happens is if Tesla massively misses on earnings, which does not look likely. That, that I would be so surprised if that happened. It's just not likely. Or if the markets were to crash. And that also doesn't look very likely. So I think it's important, especially right now, people hear this information. Nonetheless, guys, that is going to do it for your Sunday, Sunday, Saturday video. I'm 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 a day ahead. All right. We're ready to get trading again. Nonetheless, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel on your way out of this video. Again, if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, every time I make a trade link down below in the description of this video, get yourself some merch down there as well, linked in the description of this video, as well as some free stocks with Weeble. If you have not signed up already, deposit $1, get yourself 15 free stocks, throw a couple free stocks my way. It's a win-win for everyone involved. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.